As we stand today at this crossroads, the choices we make now, not just about how we live our own lives, but the decisions we make together will determine the health of our environment, communities, jobs, and economies. Here at home and in other parts of the world where people are affected by our intensive use of fossil fuels and the goods that we demand and consume. I consider myself an optimist. And yet when I think realistically what will happen and look at where we're at now and how far we have to go to turn the ship around, it's, I can't see it happening. I just see people globally in positions of power making decisions that are constantly not choosing, uh, like are continuing to perpetuate the problem instead of changing the direction. Uh, it's terrifying. It's terrifying seeing how much power um, that, you know, multinationals or governments have in, in choosing to continue down this consumerist, resource-based, fuel, fossil fuel, uh, fueled um, way of living. When I think about the future, I do feel conflicted about where it's, where it's going to go. Uh, you know, I think, I think there's, the, there's the despair story, there's the denial story, the business of, as usual, and then there's also a, a hopeful story. And I, I think that's important that we do pick one and that we live into that. I think too, you know, I talk about how bleak I see the future, but I, I know that if there is a way out, it's going to be based in hope and action. So if we can just focus on those, that's our best chance. So what could our future look like? If we focus on hope and action, where does it lead? Here's what David, Edith, Puneet, Tanya, and the others had to say when they were asked to envision the future just 15 years from now. In a future that that is less oil dependent, we would be more localized. Imagining much more rapid transit that could connect um, local community clusters um, and, and that really community um, development or, or community plans were, were organized at a very local level um, to help people feel more connected to where they're living, connected to the people that are also living in that space and um, and able to ask, you know, advocate for the needs of their specific community. It was actually a lot safer. A lot more people were outside um, and, and on the streets or in public spaces, um, especially kids and older adults, and um, that it just seemed like a more beautiful and welcoming place to be. As I look to the future and I, I dream of the future and where it will be is, yeah, reconnection. People um, getting back to their communities and, you know, getting to know their neighborhoods again, their neighbors, and knowing where their food comes from. And um, that's where true happiness comes from, is that connection within the community, within their self. I hope I would like to see greener cities with more um, parks, more food gardens, and definitely we have to learn to slow down and appreciate nature and, and learn from it. I dream about a world where making legislation that doesn't consider the environment will be taboo. I would like to live in a future where we can be more integrated with, with our intellectual understanding of our, our world and our place in it, that we, we feel good about who we are and our place in the world, and our actions are also congruent with, with, with those. I think it'll be more healthy. Optimistic side is, um, like what did I see? I just saw like, um, like, like a happy planet. I think we're all thinking along the same lines. It seems like we all have the same vision. And so that is a really comforting idea. If this is the kind of future we're going to bring about, there's much to be done. We're seeing the consequences of climate change and the broader ecological crisis we face all around us. Will we change direction? And will we do it in time? Are we up to the challenge? I think um, human beings are amazing in their capacity to change and to be generous and to like really step up to the plate and do the right thing. We are in this together, big time. We are an ecosystem and we've got to it's not an isolated group of parts. We are one big whole and uh, we've got to pull our weight and we all have to work together. We're going to have to get together as a society and try to fix this problem. And I mean, as we are the next generation, we have to deal with it, right? So 
I mean, getting out, getting everyone out of the community, yeah, we, we, we all have to come together. Just having conversations with your friends and family is, is totally a form of activism um, in terms of sharing ideas and, and talking about what you care about. So um, have a conversation, it's activism. I think you take that pressure off of people to be perfect and you just say, do the best you can wherever you're at. Pick a place to start, find what's important to you, start somewhere and just see where it goes. For people who share these values um, but aren't quite sure how to participate or get involved, um, I, would, I would just say start anywhere, do anything, um, come out to any community event, um, get to know your neighbours and, and start talking about um, with your family or close friends just what's important to you and, um, and then use that as a, as a tool to find an opening for how you can engage. What's your vision for the future? What does a good green life mean for you and for your community? How will you help make it happen? Join the conversation.